Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another gardening video. So unlike a normal garden video where I will walk you around, show you the garden, do a whole tour, or maybe plant something, I thought that with the end of the year, it being the beginning of January, it would be interesting to take a look back at how the garden has changed over the last year. So this is the second year my garden has been in existence. Literally two years ago in October of 2020, when I moved in this entire area, this entire lot, my entire piece of land was bulldozed down to the sand <laughs> to make room for my house. And you can go back, I will link below. Um, I have an entire video where my house was delivered onto the bulldozed land, um, brought in. They literally were bulldozing the morning of. And so when I say it was nothing but sand here, I mean, it was nothing but sand here. And so in two years, we have come a long way. And it is a little hard to remember sometimes the seasonality of it all when it is you know, big and beautiful and green and everything's in bloom in the middle of summer versus now in January when I do have some things like the pansies look great, but a lot of the other things after our long freeze and our hard heat wave this summer are struggling in these winter months and that's okay. So we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to just do a little bit of a um, kind of a picture moment. I'm thinking of each each moment, each month of the garden, and then a sped up, let's look through every part of the garden from every month. And at the end, we will end up back here in December for the very last garden tour of the year. So I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed putting it together and getting to see every single stage. I'm really looking forward to next year, the third year in the garden. I think a lot of the plants are going to be even bigger and better. Um, you know what they say, the first year they creep, the second year they sleep, the third year they leap. Well, next year's the third year. So I'm hoping this time next year, I will have a comparison from year one to year two to year three, and everything's just going to be amazing. Now, of course, even in three years, a garden is not mature. It takes many, many years of love and work to get a garden to a full um, overgrown kind of border style, if that's what you're going for. That's okay. It's fun to work on. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first video that I have from this year, which was February of 2022. Let's do it. Okay, so February was very quick because we couldn't plant much, but it was all about cleaning everything out and getting it ready for spring. So going through those lambs here, pulling out all the old annuals, getting out all the leaves um, that I use for a mulch in the winter, and then putting down a fresh layer of compost so that by the time we could start planting, everything was clean and ready to go. March, on the other hand, you can see that the lamb's ear is bigger and prettier. Some of the colors are starting to pop. Coneflowers and angelonia and all of the annuals and perennials that are coming back are um, starting to leaf out. Look at those little snapdragons. We're starting to put annuals in. And while the entire garden isn't full and blooming there is green everywhere green 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 um so it's a fun month lots of new beginnings and a little bit even on the cray myrtles april we finally start to get some color so first of all we start putting in blooming annuals second of all our perennials like the gara is actually starting to come into bloom our early spring things I started putting new things in the new spring bed, some low annuals. Um, I put in the bubblegum, Supertunia Vista bubblegum. Iris is starting to bloom. So all those spring flowers are really starting to happen. The roses are starting to bloom. These are knockout roses and they bloom all freaking season long. So April might be my favorite of the spring months. 
Look at the salvia. Little baby salvias. They're just getting their first flush of blooms. Those petunias are so tiny. Like this is right when we planted them. So keep an eye on them because they're going to be gigantic soon. <laughs> uh, but all of the perennials that are starting to come up, those roses, I cannot wait to see how big those are in the next couple of years. It's just a pretty moment in the garden. Nothing's overpowering yet, but we have these little pretty moments, especially the iris. I cannot wait for the iris next year because they just keep multiplying. So all the pretty ones we had this year, we will have more of next year. Ooh. All right. So May, look at the super tunias already. We also have some pretty pink iris coming up. Do you see the watermelon and the strawberries and the cucumber? Oh my goodness, everything is really starting to fill in. This video is going so fast. You can watch the slowed down version. I have every single month if you want to see everything slowly talked about. But just look, just look at the color all the way across. The hydrangeas are starting to perk up in May. The irises are coming up. The roses have so many buds. Look at all those layers. So that is what I'm really trying to get here is just layers. Box gloves are finally in full bloom. Love box gloves. I have so many of those winter sown right now. I want a whole army of them. And iris. I want all the iris. Now, June, things are in full bloom. All of the pretty things. We've got the glads. I finally got my shed put in. Like this is going to be a totally new space. The watermelon and cucumbers are starting to be harvested. My cone flowers and my tall rose. The angelonia. Look, look at those super tunias. Look at them. They're huge. The glads are in full bloom this month. The, I mean, the super tunias are just ridiculous. Everything is really starting to fill in. And here's the difference between a first year garden, a second year garden, and a third year garden is a lot of these things that are blooming and pretty are just not full size yet. But next year, they'll be bigger. The year after that, they'll be even bigger. So a lot of the space in between the plants will start to fill in. Glads and my little happy begonias. All right, July, July. Even my new garden bed there on the left is starting to come in. In July, I put in new flowers around the beginning of the shed. The cucumbers starting to peter out. Wisteria is growing up. That is a new hydrangea I planted. And the zinnias, oh my God, these zinnias are so tall. They need to go further back. But the crepe myrtles are finally in full bloom. And just the whole garden looks so full in July. Even if a lot of it is greenery, you know, there's something to be said for just greenness. The zinnias have to go further back next year. We don't need them. The, uh, the tiger lily bulbs were blooming in July. And my doggos. <laughs> so August and September, I don't have any footage because mom and I were on a European cruise Here's a little clip. We went to Giverny in France. We went to several botanical gardens. So if you want to see all of those pretty, pretty gardens, go check out that playlist. Um, in the meantime, I actually bought seeds from Monet's garden as a souvenir and I'm planning to plant those this year. So that should be very exciting. I'm really hoping they grow. I will be so happy if they do. But that means when I got home in October, a lot of my garden needed help. Now, the um, perennials, for the most part, were doing just fine. But, like, look at this watermelon everywhere. The roses grown out. <laughs> the super tunias are petering out because they didn't get a lot of love for two months. The wisteria is halfway down the path. The zinnias are taking over. So, unfortunately or fortunately, everything grew. And just needs a little bit of love. But that's okay. It's the end of the season. We're going to transition into fall. So here we are in November. I've taken out all those summer annuals and started to replace them. That watermelon. Uh, <laughs> with cold annuals. Things like 
these pretty petunias. We're going to get some mums starting to bloom and uh, kales and cabbages. I love it. We'd have more summer annuals still going if I hadn't been gone for two months. But, you know, you just can't have everything. Lots of leaves. Look at those pretty pansies. I think I said petunias earlier. This little guy lived, lived for those mums. These are the cotton candy pansies here on the end. And then I had burgundy up above and blue down below. Now we go into oh, Bitty. We go into December and last but not least, all of the pansies are still in pretty bloom. The kales are starting to get huge. Um, even most of the greens are still green, y'all. Like everything is doing so well. I cannot wait for next year. I cannot wait for next season. Ranunculus starting to push through. We are going to have so many pretty blooms. Ranunculus, tulips, iris, come spring. Y'all are going to be able to see plenty of color in the spring garden tour this year. So cross your fingers and I will see you for 2023. Thanks for watching. Bye.